anti-war student group staged a variety of protests throughout the nation today, sparked by the renewed U.S. bombing of North Vietnam. A few arrests were reported, some 95 who blocked the gates at Westover Air Force Base in Massachusetts, and 10 persons who refused police orders at California Stanford University. We have a series of reports. First, Greg Jackson at Columbia University. The young people marched off the campus and headed downtown. There was no comparison uh, to a man coming home from combat from Vietnam and a man coming home from World War II. People came home from Vietnam and they were not looked up and, and respected. So he comes home in 13 months and is told that uh, uh, you're a fool for going to Vietnam and serving your country. And obviously that mindset may affect his judgment. You get called every name in the book, but the one that you're expecting. So, I guess it's kind of obvious that uh, rejection, I guess, causes, causes some kind of a reaction that will again try to get you accepted. I guess right then and there is when I dove into the damn bottle. I've been there ever since. If they were going to send us into a war like that, then they should have been ready to back us up all the way. <laughs> it would be like me sending my kids down the street to beat up a couple of other guys and not be ready to back them up if the old man comes out and gets ready to kick their butt. I gotta be there to back them up if I'm gonna send them down there to do it. The United States did not do that. I, I still believe that they sent us over there and, and let us get killed and did not do anything to stop it. They didn't, they didn't do anything to help us. Day in and day out, there was guys getting killed when we could have put a stop to it, and they never did. And then we came back and we were different and everybody wants to know, God, what happened to those guys over there? Gee, I saw them marching around a parade ground. They all looked so nice and clean cut and they all had smiles. And then you come back and you're not smiling anymore. We did what we had to do. And people wanted us to, to be ashamed of what it made us. You're 18 years old and you're wearing somebody's brains around on your shirt because they got their head blown off right next to you. And that's not supposed to affect you. I can never understand that. What would scare me is if we were to send a group of 18-year-olds 12,000 miles away and subject them to a year of that obscenity and have them not be affected. That's what would frighten me. With the release of the last American prisoners by North Vietnam today, the final contingent of U.S. troops in South Vietnam boarded planes and flew out of Saigon. The American commander, General Frederick Wayan, spoke at the departure ceremony covered by ABC's Charles Burke. You can hold your heads high for having been a part of this selfless effort and for the peace with honor that has been achieved. According to a Veterans Administration study, half of the Vietnam combat veterans suffer from what psychiatrists call post-traumatic stress disorder. Many vets complain of alienation, rage, or guilt. Some succumb to suicidal thoughts. Eight to 10 years after coming home, almost 800,000 men are still fighting the Vietnam War. Uh, several times, Skip sort of came to pieces. Uh, in front of me and would open up and talk a lot. Uh, I suppose one of the first times was right after my daughter was killed and I was so upset and he was upset for me and he started to break down. He started, he broke down because of my daughter's death. What he poured out was about the war, and how he felt about death, how he felt about the children and Nam being killed. These were things that he had never, never talked about. His, perhaps part of his responsibility in the children dying in Nam. Uh... 
I was very worried about Alan. Like on a rainy day, like it was in Vietnam a lot of times, he just... Well, I was afraid he might do something to himself to be truthful. He would get so depressed. I was afraid he might try to take his own life sometimes. Because he just, he wouldn't talk to us. He kept everything bottled up inside of himself. And when he did explode, he just, well, he just hit the wall and with his fists and stuff like that. I was doing a lot of speed. I was drinking all the time. And I wanted the whole world to just leave me alone. I had my mind made up that there was nothing else left to lose. That there wasn't any other way to go but just down. And that I, nobody was going to miss you anyway. I went home one night and uh, the decision was to kill myself with a gun, which I suppose is, was fitting. I came home one night and he had a suicide note pinned to his bedroom door. And uh, he had a loaded shotgun in there. And I didn't quite know how to handle it, so I went in and I took the shotgun and I says, you're going to have to use something a little less noisy because I'm going to bed now. And an hour or so later, he came into my room and he sat down next to my bed and he says, thank you. And that's all he said. He got up and he went back to bed and he slept the rest of the night as far as I know. I've done a few stupid things that should have resulted in me getting killed. And that's what happened in Morgan City. I pulled a gun on a guy who was apt to blow my brains out. And when he didn't, the whole thing, the experiment just didn't work. So there I was with a gun in my hand. He was not inclined to shoot me. So I just threw the gun down. And the police came. And I got seven and a half years. It seemed somehow like it was some kind of equation. How many human lives equals a human life? How many of your buddies equals one Vietnamese? You get so used to just killing people. At the time, it was so easy. You know, emotions run real high. And you stop viewing those people as people. You're Americans, they're gooks, that wraps it. And then after that all takes place, and you find that all people are people, all mothers have sons, that all people have dreams, and you stop and think about the sons and those dreams that aren't going to be anymore, not just the people that you killed, but the lives that you killed. And that does it for your own. I'd have to tell Ace that at times, I wish I was there with him. Be 
glad he didn't have to go through this. Maybe. Dwayne G. Second degree assault. Two to six years. Why? What did we do it for? What was our reason? Was it worth it? Was it worth you going, stretching your life out there, putting your life on a limb like this? Was it worth me going out there, getting shot at, getting wounded, to try to save another man's life? What did we do it for? There was no reasons. I don't, I don't see any. But I wish I could see him. McAllister, James. Aggravated rape. Life. No parole. I consented to do this interview and hoping that they'll keep us the hell out of Central America. And if they don't, if they want to go ahead and go down there, let the guys that made the money off the last war go down there first to give us a chance to make it this time. They're sitting up Washington or wherever with their big money. And they made, there's a lot of people made money off that war. There ain't no way it went 12, 15 years that somebody didn't make some money. So let the guys that made money off that one go down and fight this one and, and we'll stay back here this time and, and we'll sell the stuff to them. We'll send them the guns and the ammunition that they need. And we'll sit back and make the money off of it. And let them watch their friends die this time. Baker, Raymond, forcible rape, 40 years, no parole. I mean, there's, there's got to be something wrong somewhere. And the government's got to face this. And they, they, they got to do something about it instead of trying to cover up and, and pretend uh, it don't exist. Guys that were over there, that died, and they're saying, all right, it was a good game. Uh, you just walk back now, everything's fine. Everything's not fine no more. It's not fine. You got guys, they don't even know where the f they are. They don't know where they've been. They have no idea where they've been for five, ten years now. They're unsociable. They don't get along with people. They can't, they, 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 their divorce rate for veterans is astronomical. It's not that maybe they don't love their families. It's that they can't even get close to them. Patterson, Kenneth A. Second degree attempted murder, robbery, 10 to 25 years. And if anybody who wasn't there, if they can see this and learn just a little bit that just because you had the Vietnam experience doesn't mean that you can never have other experiences, like to love somebody, to care about your fellow man, to be concerned about the state of the human race, then that'll make it worthwhile. All we want to do is come home. That's all.